yes, I've lived here all my life. And a lot of times my friends tell me like, why are you still here? You know, you are so open. Just just migrate and go somewhere already that will accept your um, love style and stuff like that. I'm like, mm, yeah, we, we always agree that, oh, it's always greener on the other side. So no, I'll just make do with what green I have here. Because, you know, as much as, yes, I would love to, you know, travel and, you know, somewhere more accepting of this way of love. But then again, why not be the first one to trailblaze here in Asia? Damn! I'm like, the minute I came out three years ago with an article, and I had people sliding DMs telling me, oh, I didn't know it's called this way. I've been doing it for the last five years. Oh, so many stories coming in. Because finally they have a word to put to what they are doing and they never knew it was called that whatever it is you see so there you go it only takes one person to change and I'll try <laughs> welcome to normalizing non-monogamy the podcast where we interview incredible people from across the entire spectrum of non-monogamy to hear their fascinating stories. We strive to bring guests on the show who have a healthy approach to non-monogamy. However, it's important to remember that everyone does it a little bit differently, and the views and opinions expressed by our guests do not necessarily reflect our own. Additionally, we produce this show for entertainment purposes only. Please be aware that we aren't doctors or therapists. Consult a medical professional for anything regarding your health that you might learn about on the show. Enjoy! Well, welcome to episode 280. We're Finn and Emma. And it seemed like you forgot who we were there for a second. <laughs> no, I was thinking like, hey, we're only 20 away from episode 300. That's I what I was thinking. Anyway, episode 280 today. We are talking with Janet Quill, who is from Singapore, has been exploring non-monogamy for almost a decade, and most closely identifies as solo poly. Yeah, we have such an incredible conversation. And Janet Quill's a, a, like, approach to life, vision of life is so beautiful. You heard it there in the, in the snippet at the beginning, but yeah. the, the drive to just let everybody know that it's okay to be who you are, to embrace who you are, and to, to be different. And I love that this conversation that we have is so warm and accepting. It's, I wrote down my notes. My notes say, <laughs> this conversation is like a masterclass in empathy and compassion while also being able to hold and set boundaries. Yes. I think that's, I feel like that's a pretty good synopsis of what Jenna Quill does today with us and the way that just life is lived. Yes, you're not going to want to miss this interview. Also, a quick reminder to go check out the links in the show notes to all of Jana Quill's work. It's inspiring and amazing. You're not going to want to miss that either. And I think the, the thing that you will, we, you will recognize shortly into this conversation, this is just so bubbly and bright and full, <laughs> full of joy. And yes. I hope, I hope you land on the other end of this conversation as uplifted and bright and happy as we are in one fraction of a percent as happy as Janet. <laughs> good goals. Good goals. For anyone who is a premium subscriber, we're going to jump right into the interview now. And for everyone else, we have a couple of announcements. Hey, what's, what's fun about our announcements today is that we have a testimonial from somebody in our community who gets to like talk about everything from their perspective and we don't have to drone on and on and on. Exactly. So we're going to get to that in a minute. First so stick off, around for that party. <laughs> first of all, if you're not familiar with the premium subscription, it is a way to pay a couple bucks a year if you want to support the show and skip the little intro at the beginning here. You do get the important dates in the outro though. So to sign up for that, go to our website, normalizingnonmonogamy.com and scroll down on the homepage. You'll find all of the information. Speaking of important dates. March 30th. Dating. Yes. Dating your way. We're running a workshop with Marie Tween, who was on Focus Friday's episode five a while back, is an amazing human, friend of ours, dating coach, compersion researcher, all of the things, and going to be teaching a workshop on how to bring the joy back into dating. And that will be on March 30th, as I spoiled at the beginning you here. <laughs> March 30th, 2023, you can sign up on our website under the events tab. Also, a reminder that we will be at Southwest Love Fest April 14th to the 16th in Tucson, Arizona. We are doing a workshop there and we're super excited about this weekend. You've heard us talk about it a lot the last few weeks. And you can sign up on their website, links in our show notes. And if you use the Emma, 
And if you use the code Emma, you get use a, the Emma code. <laughs> Emma code, you get a discount. The official Emma code to give you the discount. Yes, and we would love to see you at the conference. Yeah, and we happen to know that there's a handful of you coming. Yes, and we're gonna figure out a way to get all of us together for some awesomeness. We're super pumped. So join us probably all. at our workshop. Probably. I guess we're being full of ourselves and assuming that people are, are going to attend our workshop, but I think so. <laughs> well, if not, it'll be quick. <laughs> And we can go get some breakfast and have a good morning. <laughs> anyway, come check us out. <laughs> anyway, come, come check us out. We're we're delightfully come, good looking people. Come check. I'm just listening. Come check out Southwest Love Fest, and we would love to see you there. Again, you can sign up on their website. Use Emma's code Emma, and everything will be amazing, and you'll save some money. Yes. We wanted to share a few more things, but again, we told you that there is a wonderful testimonial coming, and we just wanted to basically tell you what is going to be talked about in the testimonial so you're not confused. One of the things that Kathy mentions is our meet and greets, uh, and the next one is April 21st. If you want to sign up for that, it you can find uh, links under the events tab, the same place you signed up for the dating workshop you just signed up for a minute ago. The other thing that Kathy's going to talk about is she refers to it as Mighty or Mighty Networks. That is our virtual community full of 200 plus amazing humans who are in there supporting each other in all the ways that Kathy's going to talk about. And to sign up for that, you go to our website, normalizingnonmonogamy.com, and you click on the community tab. And really quick, just to be super duper clear, you do not need to be part of the community to join the Dating Your Way workshop, to join the virtual meet and greet, or to come to Southwest Love Fest. Yes. And with that, we're going to let Kathy talk about this, and away we go. Hey, Finn. It is Kathy MC, and I just wanted to send you a note of gratitude with my voice because... I just think it's important and better than just typing something or having it get lost in the, the mighty world. So I just really, really wanted to thank uh, you and Emma for what you're doing because essentially I'm starting to get more adventurous in my day-to-day -day life. I just, our family actually just joined the Y uh, for the first time ever. And this morning I just took two classes that were new that I've never done before. And I had a lot of fun and just really pushed myself to new adventures. And it started actually in the kitchen. I was like, okay, I'm going to bake something and cook something that I've never cooked before using ingredients in the kitchen. And I was joking with a friend and I said, you know, what's going to come next? Like, I'm going to take this sense of adventure out out of the kitchen. And she joked and she said, Oh, you're going to start becoming like a mountain climber or something. And, um, I'm becoming a, a very happy adventure explorer. And it really started honest to God with the first meet and greet back in, uh, the end of August, just getting comfortable being uncomfortable and new situations with a room full of strangers and still surviving and being okay and having fun. And, uh, you know, it was just reflecting and it really, really started with uh, this community. So I just really appreciate you both, you and Emma, but I just really wanted to give a note of thanks and, you know, keep moving forward. And I'm going to see how much I can sprinkle my give love tank top all over the Y. And, you know, who knows, we might just have more people who are curious and adventurous. So have an awesome day. Don't worry about replying and I'm um, sending big hugs to you both. Mwah. Thank you, Kathy, so much for sending that in. We greatly appreciate it. And I just want to say you, you at the beginning, you said it's important to, to reach out and say these things. And we love that thought. We, it is important to us. It means so much to us. And we're so glad that you sent us a voicemail rather than an email. And that's a reminder to all of you listeners you can also send us voicemails. Yes, you can. Click on the Contact Us tab. You'll see it right there. You can also send us an email. We love those as well. But just, I don't know, I love this message. I loved how the community has inspired Kathy to branch out and explore in other aspects of life from gym to cooking. And really quick, just to quick make sure people know, we did not play this message without Kathy's consent. So if you send us a voicemail, we will definitely get your consent before we play it on the podcast. Just wanted to make that clear. Yes. Thank you so much, Kathy, for reaching out and sending us this voicemail and just for being an all-around badass human. Well, and thank you to the rest of the community for creating an environment that that fosters this adventure. Oh, yeah, for sure. And Kathy, thanks for being a part of it because <laughs> you do the same for everybody else in the community. Yes. Okay, enough, enough 
back. If you're Patty. interested in learning more, go to our website, normalizingnonmonogamy.com and click on the community tab. Everything is there. Also, before we could jump into the interview, a really quick reminder to check out our favorite affiliate, stdcheck.com. It's our great way, a great way to get tested for STIs. It's super quick and discreet, and it's only $129 if you use the links on our website. You get a discount, you support the show, and you get a 10 panel test out of it. So. And and it's MNI's favorite way to get tested. Yes. And this is a service we use. We wouldn't be telling you about it if we didn't believe in it. Yes. So go check it out. Links on our website. And now enjoy this wonderful conversation with Jenny Quill, and we'll see you on the other side. Let's go. Welcome to the podcast, Jenny Quill. Correct? Am I saying that correct? Yes, accurately. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Well, welcome. Thank you for being here. We are excited to talk to you all the way around the world, literally completely on the other side. So thank you for, for being here today. We are thrilled. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Yeah, I'm happy to be here. Yeah. We would love for you to start by introducing yourself at whatever level you feel comfortable. Well, my name is Janice and my online persona is Jenny Quill. Um, I'm a mother of one. And I try to strive being offline and online image to be as real as possible. So a lot of times when new people meet me and, you know, have seen my online profile, it doesn't deviate very far from the norm. Uh, from, not the norm, but deviate very far from, like, the real me. Because um, I feel people need to see more um, diverse kind of relationship style or love style and dynamics. So that's why I try not to, you know, try to be as open and honest. And it's scary sometimes. Yeah, very scary, in fact. And it takes a lot of balls <laughs> to, you know, create my own path. And yes, that's what I'm doing. And, and not be fearful of being judged or shamed so that, you know, I, I can get other people to come out as well and talk about their love style that is different and understand that it's okay to be different. So that's what I embody. I love, I love it. Yeah. Thank you so much for the work that you do too. It's so cool. And it's so, it's uh, impactful and powerful. Yeah. Especially in Asia, because everyone is, you know, afraid of, you know, family and friends and stuff like that. So it's quite a hurdle, yeah. I feel. And where, where in Asia are you for anybody who doesn't know? Um, in Singapore. Okay. <laughs> love it. And we're going to get into probably all of this in a few minutes, but our, the you know the the challenges maybe of exploring non monogamy in, in Singapore and all of that. But do you mind talking a little bit about what your relationship dynamic looks like today, as of like right now? What what does that sort of look like for you? Well, I realize I identify rather closely to solo polyamory specifically, so. I have multiple um, meaningful relationships without having a primary partner, which I, I don't know, I just feel like I'm committed to all of them differently and I don't necessarily need a primary or a nesting partner. And I feel very comfortable in this arrangement and I feel it's very fluid and flexible. And the fact that I have a child, it, it, just, it just works for me. So I, I like that flexibility a lot. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I love that. Mm -hmm. And it, so it, it sounds like you live very openly. You love openly, you live openly and you try to embody that and all mm -hmm. you do. And I think that is just, it's beautiful. And I'd love to go maybe back in time. Where did, where did, when did, how did non-monogamy come into your life for the first time? Mm, maybe a good, Ten years ago, I was like unfulfilled in my previous relationships, and so I literally went online and just typed other relationship style or something along that line, and many things pop up from polyamory to swinging and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So I like, wow! So I start reading, and I wasn't sure if that's that's what I want or need, and then. After a few years from, you know, reading all those stuff, I'm like, oh, all my relationships just end after two, three years of them taking my youth. 
and it doesn't go anywhere. So I'm, I was like clearly on the relationship escalator, trying to achieve something, have a checklist. So I'm like, if this is not working, I'm just going to burn this checklist and start from something new. So maybe a good seven years ago, I start to embark on this polyamy journey, having multiple partners, dating them, telling them this is what I'm trying. And at the same time, um, struggled with uh, reconditioning and I'm unwiring my whole mindset because I'm actually raised Catholic. So it's tough. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah, you have to undo that mindset. Yeah, yeah. Yes, so much, so much undoing. Um, a lot of times I see my traditional ideals pop up while I'm like in multiple relationships and I recognize that and I'm like, oh no, oh no, no, no. At least I recognize that and aware that it's popping up, that this is stemming from something from the past. So it, it, it helps me to work on it. And then eventually I'm here right now, more comfortable than I have seven years ago. Yeah. Wow. Yes. I love that. What but what what were those early those early days of time to explore? You're 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 sick of monogamy, you're sick of the relationship escalator, you research it for three years, it's time to like test it. Yeah. What did that what did that look like for you? It looks exciting at the same time terrifying. <laughs> Totally, yeah, yeah. especially in Asia and Singapore, I have no models to look at. Everyone else is like overseas in the States, you know, Chinese born American. I'm like, I don't see a lot of um, representative in Asia. And I'm like, but it doesn't mean that it's wrong to embark on this mm-hmm. at the same time. So I know it's just my life choice. So Back then, I told my mom, I'm going to try this, you know, date multiple people, committed relationship, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, she's Catholic. All she said was, you read too much and you're just following suit. Like, it's a fashion fad, you know, it'll, it'll pass. It's like a phase, you know, kind of thing. And seven years down the road, like right now, till date, she, all she said was, um, do what makes you happy. Wow. Boom. <laughs> Wow. Yeah. yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. So Did, she, she's met my partners. So she knows. She knows them. She knows some of them. And I talked to her about it, about my relationships, even though I know she probably do not agree. But I don't need her to agree. Just need her to understand. And if she still disagree, fine. It's okay. We're so different. She's like 70 and I'm like 30. Come on. 40 years gap can do a lot of damage and good. <laughs> But yeah, yeah. so yeah, I don't hide from yeah, my like mom. Yeah, like you said, you don't you don't need your mom to agree, but you need her to be supportive. Yes, as much as possible. But she do as sometimes can be quite spiteful and say stuff that hmm, I sense some hmm, you know something off her. Yeah, her comments could be quite yeah. But I don't take it personally because she's from a different generation. You see, and maybe she might not even really fully understand and embrace my lifestyle, my love choice. And that's fine. That's her thing to sort out. I don't sort out mine. (laughs) Right. Like, like you said, she says, you know, do whatever makes you happy. And that, like, that's, that's amazing. I mean, she doesn't have to agree. She doesn't necessarily, I mean, she, you want her to understand, but getting to that point is, is huge. And the fact that you can talk to her about it too. Yeah, I know. um, So amazing. I love, I love that she's, come around maybe not fully supportive but that you can talk to her and be open with her and share your partners with her i think that's amazing and i also love i love a bit of the irony that her comment when you first told her was you've done too much reading and now you're following suit and i'm like wait you've been you've been reading that bible a lot and it seems like you're kind of following suit a lot so i (laughs) i see a little bit of hypocrisy but this isn't a religious (laughs) podcast so we don't have to we don't have to go down that route too much i'll be like i'm reading a different bible that's all (laughs) exactly (laughs) boom exactly i love it i love it did did you grow um did you grow up in singapore has that been your home as well or have you lived other places yeah yes i've lived here all my life Mm-hmm. And a lot of times my friend tell me like, why are you still here? You know, you are so open. Just just migrate and go somewhere already that will accept your um, love style and stuff like that. I'm like, mm, yeah, we, we always agree that, oh, it's always greener on the other side. So no, I'll just make do with what green I have here. 
because you know as much as yes i would love to you know travel and you know somewhere more accepting of this way of love but then again why not be the first one to trailblaze here in asia damn i'm like yeah the minute i came out three years ago with an article and I have people sliding DMs telling me, oh, I didn't know it's called this way. I've been doing it for the last five years. Oh, so many stories coming in because finally they have a word to put to what they are doing and they never knew it was called that, whatever it is, you see? So there you go. It only takes one person to change and I'll try. <laughs> right. I love that. I think that that mindset, uh, you know, your friends are right, right? It would be, so much easier for you if you would just jump on a plane and leave and go somewhere where polyamory was okay. Yeah. But or more accepted. Or more accepted. And what you're doing is saying, well, it's never going to be okay here unless somebody shows that it can be okay. And I give you a, just a ton of respect and credit for, for, for being one of those people, for being somebody who stays to say, I'm going to change, I'm going to make it greener here. Yeah. rather than just go where it's greener exactly and it's all about like just normalizing this this way of relating with your partners and stuff like that so it can be done mm-hmm. so so what did what did those early days look like for you like how were you able to date how what did dating look like if you're the you're sort of the trailblazer in non-monogamy it sounds like there's maybe some other people doing it but they don't call it that and they're probably yeah. doing it underground yeah what did it what did it really look like for you it's not easy to find someone who's like aligned with me and i've tried all sorts like me being polyamory and dating someone who's monogamous so i tried everything tried something some non-sexual um, partners as well that yeah asexual partner um as um, people with mental issue like exposure and stuff like it's all about inclusivity and diversity. I, I take them all and I, I, I enjoy the, the diversity. So, but sometimes it's very hard for them to like understand me. They think that eventually I will find one person and then settle down. But right now I'm dating and having all these people just looking for the right one. And I have to clarify that at the very beginning so they don't try to, um, how to say, I know terms like, like to pull me out from the whole herd and be a cowboy or cow person because I had yeah. that. I had that. He proposed to me four years, five years ago, and I thought it was going to be an open marriage. Apparently, no. <laughs> yeah, he enticed me to you know migrate me and my child to America. You know, and they say, well, okay, you know, I'm gonna give you the American dream life. I'm like, <laughs> if I'm gonna be caged there, hell no. <laughs> hell no yes it sounds amazing but if i'm gonna be a caged bird there unable to love i'll just go into like don't know what severe depression i will not have family relatives there that's it that's the end of me he's gonna adopt my kid oh if i'm gonna be separated from him oh, i can't get my kid back oh that's it sounds like an abusive marriage wow. already without even being in it <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, yeah. So I'm but assuming I, you got out of that. I, I got out of that. I accepted the ring, thinking it's open and it, what? <laughs> so but how I did do, you learn? How did you I, learn that it wasn't going to be as open? Because we tried to meet halfway and couldn't. I even banned, I think banned back until like, say, how about we try monogamy for one year <sighs> and see if it works. And then maybe, you know, not close to the idea that it could be potentially open. <laughs> he said no. And I'm like, Fuck off, then. <laughs> I love you, but fuck off. <laughs> oh, it's so yeah, confusing. Like this isn't gonna really. work. Yeah, it's not gonna work because we can't even meet, you know, on the same page. You know, trying to negotiate here, right? Yeah, and um, early last year I saw he got he's getting engaged. Eh, early last year, yeah, one year ago. I'm like, wow, fourth wife. So. Back then, years ago, my question was, how can you assure me that I will not be the fourth ex-wife? Because he had three in his pocket already. Then he, all he said was, oh, in that case, that means I haven't found the right one. Just want to flip the table until Miami. <laughs> because here I am trying to, you know, rewire, dismantle all the Mr. Right, the right one that, and then found like the right four or the right five or the right two. And this, but it's okay. So I already feel like it's so mismatched that it's just not going to work, work out. It's not going to work out. 
Yeah. 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 And I think that that mentality is so common. You come up against in, in the world of non-monogamy where it's, well, okay, you're, you're just doing this until you find the right one and then you'll settle down versus this, this isn't a phase. This isn't anything other than how I want to live my life. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to have people in my life in the way that makes sense to have people in my life. And I think yeah. that's a really challenging concept for, for many people to process. And frankly, it's even challenging for me as somebody who lives this some days mm. to really process. So I, I can understand that. Yeah. And back then, I already had two partners for over a year. And he just wanted me to just give up those emotional investment and the time. I'm like, that's selfish. That's very selfish. Yeah. 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 I won't even accept my yeah. one-year monogamy trying out. What? Seriously? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. You were trying to meet him and it just didn't work. <laughs> yeah. So good luck to his next few marriages or whatever it is. I hope it works out. <laughs> I want the best for him. Yeah. You don't seem that optimistic that he found the one. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he has three. And if the fourth one is going to be the same relationship dynamic, like how do you think it's going to be it work out the same way you do with your three failed marriages? Come on, think about it. Just think. It's not about finding the right one. Yes, he could be the right one, but if you use the same way, it could become wrong. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah. I, I would love to understand how you became su- such a trailblazer, such a, um, yeah. I, the word that comes to mind, like such a badass that you're, <laughs> you're trailblazing in many different aspects of your life. And I'd love to hear about maybe some of the others as well, but where... Where, how, where did the, you said it takes a lot of balls. Where did, where did your balls come from? Or that drive? I, I think got to do with like my kid as well. Like how do I want to model for my child? Do I want to model like, mm-hmm. it's not okay to live my truth, you know, to speak my truth just because I'm going to be judged by other people. So then again, yeah. So that's why I, I get a lot of, I think the balls and the guts from my kid, you know, that little human being. Yeah. So I want to live my life as truthful, as real as possible and, and model to him that, yeah, this is me. This is what I am. This is it. That's all. So it's really all for my kid. <laughs> yeah. It, so, so I, I've got to push back then and say, you didn't, you didn't embody any of this before your, your kid was born. I would say it's like dormant. <laughs> like it's in there, you know. All of us actually have courage, but because of you know how society mm-hmm. is like viewing us and it's very scrutinizing our every move and everything we say, you know, could be like racist or whatever it is along the line. So we get, you know, conditioned to conform. So then right now I'm doing something that's very different. And yes, I think if I don't have my kid, maybe I won't be like out, out. Probably just yeah, be quiet. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. You might not have gone as far as you did. Mm. Who knows? But yeah. So did that little push yeah. by that little child. There you go. Here I am, <laughs> talking. Yeah. You know, speaking in podcasts and doing interviews in Singapore, which is oof, not easy. You know, we get we get we get red flag. <laughs> yeah. 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 Along those lines, like you said, you kind of came out three years ago. Um, yes. Is that right? Yes, uh, 2020, yeah, three years ago. Yeah, how, how did that go? Wow, um, there's naysayers, and of course there's those that love it. And yeah, it was it was hard because people were very harsh. And I have like my friends who know me, and they go to like those forums where they are talking about my story, commenting on every little thing, telling, saying like how messed up my kid's going to be. <laughs> stuff like that and like and yeah they're like little warriors you know typing and fighting them off for me and i was not doing friends. anything yeah my friends and then they tell yeah. me how pissed off they are because they don't know you and they can comment like what so i'm like then i just tell them mm, why are you so angry is it because a part of you believe it's true so that's why you're upset must be right if it's you if you don't think it's true what they say about me it wouldn't be so infuriating 
because I am not very, I'm not angry or frustrated with them because I know what they say is not true. So I have this zen, you know? And yeah, so that's why I don't even defend myself. And I find it so peaceful. Oh God. Like not even trying to defend that. Yes, I'm right and you are wrong. Like just yeah. agree to disagree. Like, yeah, there's no yeah, right or wrong in how we love, right? It's life choices. So then I'm like, boom, untouchable. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, they try to mess with my mind, right? Saying stuff like that and saying about my kids. I'm like, I just look at them like, why so angry with my lifestyle? Why? That's all. So I'm like, I'm, I'm impressed and blown away because I think there's a, there's a mindset. One of the other, an influencer, a business entrepreneur that I follow often talks about when people post negative comments his response is to feel bad for them that that they have the time in their day to seek out somebody spend that time not only finding them but then taking the time to write shitty things about another human to to what to make themselves feel better and and really it's a moment of just sadness that that's what that person chose to do with their time chose to do with their time right yeah. and and meanwhile you're over here making the grass greener and they're trying to kill your grass. And yeah, like, exactly. And bulldoze like, it. Fuck that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, fucking want to bulldoze my grass. I'm like, ay. Yeah, so I'm like, why can people be so harsh? They must be very harsh to themselves too. <sighs> That's why they can say yeah. such, such mean things. And it's really not about me anymore, really. It's just about them all. Like, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. I love that you have a group of friends too that loves and supports you, of course, and like, and that will go online and, and try to defend you. <laughs> Hilarious. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. love it. I love it. And the, the interesting thing is, all these friends are not in non monogamy, they are traditional as fuck. <laughs> so, like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> They understand that, yeah, this is my life choice and I understand them. And yeah, we could still hang out. We could be friends just because we have different ideas about love and relationship doesn't mean we have to kill each other. We're not at war. I'm like, yeah, let's make love, not war. So therefore, I have this troop. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah, they find my lifestyle very fascinating as well. And, And like the way I communicate with my partners, they feel like they could also learn to communicate with their partners in whatever, you know, monogamous, traditional, conventional kind of relationship or marriage even. So, yeah, it works, you know. Communication skill, effective communication skills is universal. Can be applied to any relationship dynamic, not just non-monogamy. Just that because in a short period of time, I have multiple people, so my capacity increased. But while people in traditional relationship is one at a time, so the capacity don't go as big as someone who has many people at the same time, emotion and all, would just increase and grow over time. So yeah, so they get it, and yes, so they, they like it, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's amazing. Yeah. yeah. It, it is, it is. And it, I mean, it shows the power of uh, community too, having those people around you and have your back, you know, in makes it in some ways, you know, a little easier to put yourself out there because, you know, yeah. you at least have some people that have your back. Yeah, for sure. It's so obvious who's have my back and who's like, okay, shun away. It's like, okay, I filtered through friends. I don't have a lot. I need a few. And that's it. That's all I need. Those that make me feel alive. Those that are like sunshine to my day and not like drain me. So yeah. So you really cut out and weed out people as you go along. As as you show, I feel as I show my true self more and more and more, the lesser and lesser friends I have. And then the, the ones that are left are like jam. Like, yeah, this is her. Oh, damn. Okay. Well, we'll accept that. You know, that kind of, yeah. And the rest is just... <laughs> Just whittle off and it's fine. Filter themselves no loss. out. Okay? Yeah, yeah, sort yourself out, really. Especially after the where I came out three years ago. Yeah. I love that. I think it's I think it's something that maybe many people aspire to 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 say, I'm just gonna be me and let that attract the right people around me. But it's yes. also really fucking scary. Because that might mean that you lose a friend or multiple friends or mm-hmm. even a family member. Mm. How have you how have you been able to process some of that? Well, um, 
Yeah, family members, yes, they do ask to. And how do I process it? I don't know. I think it's just part of life, right? Part and parcel of life. And I cannot really force someone to be in my life. What, be my fake self to please you? Oh, that's such an Asian thing, you know, people pleaser. And clearly I'm not. I'm like people unpleasing. <laughs> and, <laughs> only, and only to the right people I am pleasing. That's all. So I have that to this... Um, to recondition and get rid to over the years as well, the people-pleasing part that I feel like it sometimes come up in my relationships too. So yes, when it um, comes to friends and family that I lose, I would grieve losing those connections for sure. And then after that, I'll be okay. I just grieve and embrace, you know. It's like I know like in for all my life, there's no emotions that's permanent like anger or sadness. So eventually it'll pass. It'll just need time and for me to, you know, process it and, and heal or anything of that sort, then it will just pass. So, yeah. And then, you know, they, they go, sure, I grieve, and then there'll be new people coming into my life. <laughs> and if I continue keeping those people who don't accept me, how am I going to embrace those new people that will accept me? I only have so much energy and time and emotional capacity. So why waste it on people who don't appreciate me? So that's my for take you. on it. Yeah, for me. Yeah. yeah, appreciate me for being me. And yeah. And I would even argue that there is one feeling or emotion that, that can become permanent, which is if you aren't living true to yourself, you live in a constant state of feeling unsettled or, or not who you are. And so by, by taking the path you've chosen, you don't have to sit with that. You have to, then you have to process the grief and the sadness, maybe of losing a friendship, but you don't have to sit for five, 10, 20, 50 years being somebody who you're not to make somebody else happy. Exactly. That sounds like mental issue is going to come up anytime. <laughs> being not my true self, then it's going to lead to depression or anxiety or, I don't know, many sorts of, yeah. So I feel it's it's kind of like link when you your inner self and your outer self is disconnected. And that's yeah. where yeah, cause you're, the mental issue and the turmoil that is going to happen. And I, yeah. yeah, internal struggle. Yeah. yeah, the internal struggle. And I don't want that. I have a kid to take care of. I cannot be you know, internally struggling like that, it would be just, I, I wouldn't be able to operate or function, right, for him in my best version. So yeah, be my true self, it's it's easy. I mean, it's easy with practice <laughs> over time. <laughs> so yeah, I don't want to make it like sound so easy. Actually, it's very hard. There's a lot of self-work, but yes, you, you'll get there eventually. And I don't even know where's the turning point. It's just so, just like, yeah. It's only when I'm thrown into a situation and I react differently as I would four or five years ago, I count that as a milestone of my change or evolving and stuff like that. So, Damn. I love it. Yeah, <laughs> I love it. I, I was curious about something else. I have lots of questions, so yeah, you'll, you'll, get, you'll get used to this. Um, this, is, as I understood it, you, you said your relationships before you opened yourself up to solo poly were one or two years, and then you felt like they sort of would would steal your energy, and then you would usually move on from those and then yeah. find another one for a year or two. But since you've moved into solo poly, as best as, as, if I caught it right, your relationships have lasted longer than that, five, yeah. five plus years at this point. So I'm how, amazed too. How do you, yeah, how do you make sense of, it's, what changed for you that you think has allowed these relationships to double or triple or quadruple the amount of time that you're in them successfully? So first thing I want to put it out there is like the length of the length, the longevity of a relationship mm -hmm. is not the sole indicator of a successful relationship. Of course. So I have short term relationships at six, eight months and I, I love it. It's great. But then after that, we want different things. We go separate ways. That's fine. Yep. And I also have another few, two couple, uh, two partners that are like lasted for over five years to my amazement <laughs> that a lot of times every year pass, I'm like, I think they're not going to like be in my life long enough, uh, continue. And no, 
they still stick around and they're still showing up. And I'm like, oh, mind blown. So I don't know, like, what went right probably. Um, being honest with them was one thing I do, right, as compared to 10 years ago in my previous relationship. I think I was so... Like I said, I was afraid, right? You know, being truthful and then telling my partner certain thing and they might leave me, okay? That it was what back then. Right now, I'm so truthful, not afraid that they will leave me. And if they leave me, that's fine. But no, they stick around. So, hey, bonus. So, yeah, five years, six years, I don't know. Damn. And I have um, one partner that is non-sexual and he just left and returned to Minnesota May last year. And we're still texting every day and it's not like a lot of text like just you know little how are you stuff like that i miss you which is true i do miss him and he might come to asia ah i was like it's so expensive to bring my kid over he'll be like how about we meet in between maybe like thailand or something i'm like yeah let's plan so i feel like the relationship with him he he was in singapore for like a good five years and he's married has a wife the wife knew about me but i've never met her in the flesh before she doesn't want to and that's fine <laughs> know her boundaries so i don't push it even though i put it out there telling him you can tell your wife if she wants to see me i don't mind <laughs> i keep you know like i would love to see her like she's so gracious and understanding that of him you know that she, she said i remember one thing she said that when he opened up and told her he's seeing me and doesn't want to like be hiding, even though it's non-sexual. He just she all she said was, mm, "It's nice to have another outlet to go to." And if you're meeting her, just put on a calendar. Fuck, so cool. <laughs> Why are you so cool? <laughs> so yeah, can you not be cool? <laughs> yeah, that's all she said. I mean, she she has her struggles to trying to accept that he's like that, but that's for her to work out. It's not on me anymore. But she's saying that it's just too cool for me. Yeah, she, at first he he was ready to like when she when he opened up to her he, he's ready for the ultimatum like separation or divorce. She she even brought it up and say you know you you want to be with her fully or you know or stuff like that. No, I don't want that. I want to share with you your partner. <laughs> Just to make it clear, I'm not here to steal him or like own him and possess him. Nope, we're sharing him his time and yeah and stuff. So. Yeah. Five years pass without meeting her in Singapore. Damn, and then now they're back in the States. Shit, face. Sorry. <laughs> like, come on. Like, oh, I missed my chance to see her. I mean, I have seen pictures of her. Clearly, she has seen me and my kids, so she kind of know how we look like. But, yeah. I also love that you made the, the, the really important distinction that the longevity of a relationship is not an indicator of its health yes. or success. So I, I wanted to point that out that I was not to defend myself, but I think where I was kind of going with that was that you, you kind of found yourself in a pattern yeah. and that pattern was one or two years and then the relationship ended and you've seemed to have broken that pattern by changing the dynamic. And I thought that was interesting. Um, but I, I totally agree. We, we talked to somebody a couple months ago where they were like, yeah, uh, you know, grandpa and grandma have been in a marriage for, you know, 70 years, never mind the fact that he's absolutely miserable and they don't talk to each other and they barely even know each other, but Hey, they're married still. So that must be success. Right. Sounds- and I think that's important that success and health of a relationship is not Right. Is not indicated by the longevity. And I, I really am glad you, you pointed that out. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Sounds like my parents. <laughs> well, 40 years of misery, I think. I don't know. To me, it looks like it, but they just wouldn't want to. But it's all right. That's her yeah. problem. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's not yeah, going to yeah, that. It's all about me sense. now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> not going to comment about her marriage. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. Yeah. Um, I'm curious in Singapore, how has it been dating when being open, trying to meet people? How has that gone? I don't know. A lot of people think it's just like hook up. Yeah. <laughs> like part of me is all about sex. <laughs> and then they're mind blown that one of my partner is non sexual. They'd be like questioning, how can you call him your boyfriend if you're not having sex? And all I say was, well, your idea of um relationship and boyfriend is so limited that 
can't help you, so it's fine. It's okay if you think like boyfriend equals to you must have sex. It's okay. <laughs> like you cannot like incapable of loving someone that you don't have sex with. Then uh, all those asexual people <laughs> will be crying because <laughs> they want love and affection too. Yeah, but yeah, so it's hard in a sense like I put a lot of energy explaining to them and explaining who I'm seeing in a very layman term, layman way that is easily digestible and palatable. <laughs> so I'm very nice, right? You know, a lot of people just cannot wrap their head around this idea of having two partners at a time or three or even four. Yeah, because we are always we are only exposed to monogamy and traditional way of loving from media to our, even our own close friends and family. So then, yeah, they think it would be hard and... And I feel like even it, a lot of them are different from me and probably not even practicing polyamory or non-monogamy. But they just enjoy being with me. And then just, I don't know, like especially for the, those two over five years, I think they do not really agree with non-monogamy and polyamory. They don't think it suits them, but it is for me, you see. So it's either you accept me in my way or you can reject me and then that means I redirect to somebody else. But no, they grow fond, grow really fond. And so the years pass and it got easier that I'm seeing other people. Like, I don't know, it's just, yeah, the feel and compatibility. I don't need to find someone who's also polyamory, polyamorous, you see. Yeah, we could have, we have differing ideas about love, but on how we can, you know, navigate the relationship dynamic, but I feel like if we have understanding and acceptance and we love each other, it's possible, even though we are, could be very different in any way, you know, in ideas. Yeah, so... Like I said, a few years ago, I dated one guy for a couple of months and I'm poly and he is monogamous as hell. And um, he was so insecure. He wants to know everything. I feel so stifled. But I give him and tell him everything so that he feel, you know, less insecure. But that's as much as I can do, right? I can tell you everything, but it's then your own work to do. It cannot just depend on me. I cannot be accountable for your self-work, god damn it. <laughs> so yeah, it didn't last wrong because he wasn't seeing it that his insecurity has nothing to do with me. As much as I try to secure yeah. him and be open, it just kind of fueled the insecurity even more in that way. So then it's up to him to do the self-work, but he didn't, so we didn't continue. We go separate ways. Yeah. He's a sweetheart, though. <laughs> it's been, yeah, five years ago. Yeah, still have a piece of my heart somewhere. I'll send this podcast to him so he knows. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Well, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm curious. You, I mean, damn it, you're delightful. And I can understand <laughs> why, <laughs> why people are like, well, I'm monogamous. I don't really like this non-monogamy thing, but damn, like it's delightful. I want to be, be in it. Uh, yeah, I'll be around. Yeah, so, right? <laughs> yeah. So this month, I'm dating like two, uh, two, three other guys. Just dating, and one is Malay, traditional as hell. Cannot drink alcohol at home. Cannot bring girls home too. He will be disowned. Alcohol and girls at home. <sighs> but he's just so fascinated and bewitched by me. Bewitch is his word, quoting him. Bewitch. I'm going to send this podcast to him as well. <laughs> I'm talking about you. <laughs> yeah. No, but yeah, he's, he's, he's lovely. So I'm like, I think him being so traditional is novel for me too, somehow, as much as me yeah. being so free and open and it's also novel to him. So you see, yeah, opposite attracts, kind of. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, yeah. I, I'm, so the recent weeks, I made him do things that is out of his comfort zone. Like little things like a stray push cart, grocery push cart on the road. And then I say, you know what? I want to sit in there and you push me. And he would just say no. First reaction was no. Okay. And, I, and after that, he thought about it and said, you know what? Let's do it. Fucking just push me. And we're like, yeah, <laughs> to the grocery store. I'm like, wow, this guy's boundaries can probably be shifted a little bit you know so this is just one of the little things that's like non-sexual right so when it comes to maybe the sexual part could be a bit coaxed <laughs> i don't know I, 
I just think he's malleable. It's not like fixed. Like, okay, no, people is gonna look at us and it's gonna be uncomfortable. It's gonna be weird, you know, that kind of thing, so many things, you know. But I don't think, I don't care. I just wanna sit in a pushka and get pushed in it and it's fun. So he did it and that was fun. Few seconds, 20 seconds, one minute walk or something. Yeah. So little things like that really can tell, I can tell like if the person can be, how to say, like, I would say push. But if they can adapt to your world, if they can adapt exactly. to the yeah right yeah to my suggestions, then maybe you know a lot of other things could be communicated properly and then executed. <laughs> yeah, because I really want to bring him to the dark side. I mean, not dark side, like <laughs> the um swing scene and stuff like that. <sighs> <laughs> that, is, that is the part of me that I, <laughs> that I, other than I'm polyamorous, have committed relationship. I still enjoy swinging <laughs> at the same time, and this is like the recent year. Like, yeah, that is not since many years ago. So, yeah, have a lot of layers, yeah. huh? <sighs> Heavy. Well, let's <laughs> let's talk about swinging in just a second because I'm curious okay. about that as yeah. well. Yeah, in but Asia. I, okay, let's go. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and and I before we go there, I wanted to check. You've you've talked about helping or supporting partners in sort of expanding their comfort zone, expanding their boundaries, and and just to clarify, I, I didn't pick up anything in there that was your you're forcing people to do things they don't want to do. You're you're inviting them to things that you enjoy, things that you love, and yeah. trying to support them on that journey if that's a journey they want to go on. That's how I sort of interpreted that. But I was curious on your side, where were your areas of growth or have you come up against areas where maybe it was jealousy? You've, you've had a jealous bout or some, something else. I picked jealousy random, but are there mm-hmm. areas that you've had to really work on yourself in this journey of exploring non-monogamy? Um, yes. Jealousy. <laughs> oh, it's so toxic. Let's go to jealousy and let's talk about a partner that is based in Hong Kong. Over the last five years, he's been my life. And yes, with him, I feel a lot of jealousy pre-COVID because I was still, you know, reconditioning, right? You know, trying to get that monogamy out of me and put the non-monogamy in me. So <laughs> where he has like other, seeing other people, I just go bad shit nuts uh, off the roof. It was so toxic. And I realized back then it's a toxic cycle because we will meet and then we will make up, have sex. And then it would seem like we have sweep it under the rug. But nope, after that, the same cycle comes back again. I see somebody, he feels uncomfortable. He sees something and we go into this fight that is escalated beyond, it's just brutal. I would say brutal. And then we have sex again, and it becomes feels okay for a while. And then, you see, it goes on, and then we have this three-year COVID break. I couldn't see him because of the quarantine restrictions, but we still do keep connected. Like, we talk, we text, but it's very loud. No enthusiasm because I'm not. there's nothing to look forward to. You know, COVID has messed all of us up. So, yeah. And December last month, I went to Hong Kong. And saw him after three years. It was wow. scary. It was scary for me because the months before I told him I'm coming, all he says was he wants to close this chapter. He wants to say goodbye. He wants this to be over. It's the end. So his mindset is this relationship is over and it's just going to be a closure for us after so long, the three years, no, five years plus when we were seeing each other. And then for me, is I'm hopeful we'll start anew. <sighs> what the fuck? <laughs> so we have differing views. And then, so now he knows that I think that way. And I know he thinks that way, so we communicate. And I think we're trying to make it work. But he's still very wary of me because, like I say, we have past where I go bad shit nuts and it escalate and, you know, just being so mean and hurting and just... And I'm like, I know, but now I'm different. I'm so different. I'm like karma and I don't want to hurt you. I don't have the urge to provoke you like I have before. So I've changed a lot. And if you can't see that, you're blind. 
He said, no, I see, it seems that, he, he tells me, he seems that you have changed for the better. And it feels good, you know, he doesn't feel very anxious around me at all. But when I was in Hong Kong, he was anxious because he don't know what I would do. I can be quite erratic sometimes and let my emotions drive me nuts. And then, yeah, I need to center and ground myself all the time. It's, it's something about him that has this effect of me. Other partners, even the one in Minnesota now, it's like stable as hell. So I don't know what he has that is just making me go crazy sometimes. But yeah, so it was it was nice and I'm happy that we kind of like make up. And I don't know. And now he's seeing someone in Hong Kong for like the past three months or something like that. And I don't feel jealous. Whew, milestone. I feel envious. <laughs> like, oh, she has that. I want that too. You know, that kind <laughs> yeah, so I told him that I'm happy he found someone he's compatible with and like very much. You know, during the COVID, he didn't find someone, but right now he has. And I'm happy for him. At the same time, I'm envious of her. While here, I am struggling to find time to meet you for a weekend in Hong Kong. So tell me, what should I do? Because <laughs> he's, not, he, he's not planning, he's not giving me this, not... I, it's so uncertain. And you know, COVID, we had... Um, so we were kept apart because of the restrictions, right? We couldn't fly and all. And now the re- we are limited by time and money. Help! <laughs> <laughs> this is real yeah. thing. Yeah, it's so real. Yeah. It's not about having a lot of partners and you have like unlimited resources and time. No. <laughs> so it's, yeah, limitation like that that I see. Like now... The travel restrictions have lifted and I'm gutted because I cannot be traveling with him because of the time. He doesn't have the time. Sometimes I don't have the time and the money and all, you know, traveling is not cheap now. Everything is like inflated to make up for the loss for the three years of COVID. Damn it. Capitalism. But yeah. So yeah, that's, that's the limitation to see him right now. <sighs> yeah. There's, there, you can have an abundance of love but yeah. time, money, those resources are exactly. you know, finite. A finite. Yeah. I would love to hear what the, well, first of all, thank you for, for the vulnerability around talking about things you've struggled with. I yeah. know that's, oh, that's no not problem. always easy, so thank you. <laughs> and I would love to hear what what is the role that swinging has been playing in your life? Yeah, you said it's oh. um, relatively new, like a year. Yeah. Uh, now it's no half a year June so I've met like the organizer maybe five years ago and back then I wanted to um, go and try out with that partner in Hong Kong and we we didn't even though I mean we didn't because he suddenly had some yeast infection <laughs> back then 2019 uh, we were ready. We had our STI reports done and, and ready to go and play, you know. <laughs> and then I think back then he probably had a bit of um, performance anxiety. So the body hormonal thing going on and that happened. So it didn't, we didn't follow through. So what happened was last year I told him, I'm going to try and I'm going to go alone without you. I told that partner. He's like, yeah, okay, go ahead. And so I did, went alone. <laughs> And it was fun. I met very open-minded people. <laughs> I mean, like, it was interesting and it just add flavor to my life, you know. It's like recreational sex. That's it. Yeah, not like I'm going to have a committed relationship. I mean, like, if it blossomed to something with those people, then sure. But if it doesn't, then we'll just keep it to what it is, <laughs> you know. You know, yeah. like exploring the body and enjoying each other and stuff like that, you know. Yeah, so, and... um. That was June, and I met somebody during that that, that um, party, and we planned and went to a swing party that was organized by the same person in Bali in August. So I went with that swing partner that I've met briefly. It's a leap of faith because I don't know if I like him, actually. Like, yes, it feels good, but spending five, six days might be, you know, might turn ugly, like we might not be compatible in sleeping pattern, you know, <laughs> whatever, he might snore and I'll be like, fuck, <laughs> or stuff like that. But the whole trip turned out very beautiful. Like we were so close and we were, yes, we were playing with other people, sure, but we talk about it and yeah, it was very, 
interesting dynamic between me and this swing partner. And now he has, he's dating someone seriously for maybe the last four or five months, I don't know. And he tell me he really liked me a lot, but he don't want to fuck up things with that person because he's seeing that person seriously. And so he feel bad and disrespectful to the partner. If he meets me, I'm like, you got issues. <laughs> you got issues. It's like you want to try something non-monogamous, yet you want to be monogamous with someone and <sighs> conflicting. So I also feel like I'm grieving that connection because I feel he's pulling away. And I understand, right? Yeah, from his... I'm hating it, but I understand. <sighs> Two very strong you feelings. S- you, can still, you can still grieve it and yeah. understand at the same time. Exactly. Yeah, so grieving and all. But it's all right. It's, all right. it's getting easier and easier. Yeah. We so have, have, you, have you done gone to more parties since then um so the bali in august was actually the last one so i'm not really a hardcore swimming person yeah yeah but i do plan like on the sites other stuff with other people that i met at the swing party so our own little party (laughs) of three or four you know something like that just you know explore and just play and just be frisky and just yeah do unholy shit <laughs> yeah I'm, yeah and then after that come back home and be a saint to my child oh i miss you i love you my baby yeah from it's, it's, it's interesting because i sometimes feel like especially after the bali trip for five days i was like a vixen you know like wow you know sexually driven and, and you know and everyone else and i come back fly back to singapore and i become mothering and nurturing it's whew, the flick is so intense sometimes that i but it's it's all me still just like you know yeah. we all have different layers so from that to that like literally after i landed the next day i i, I remember going to my kids school and we do some parent child bonding making art and craft we were invited so there were other parents and i'm like and when I, when I was doing the art and craft, it literally felt like Bali trip was so surreal, like a dream. Like I'm back in reality now. <laughs> it was hilarious. I told my friend that they're like, yeah, it must be. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I can relate to that. I know in the past, like we've gone to places like Desire in Mexico and you spend a week at, at a resort and there's... <sighs> all sorts of debauchery and then that like next monday you're like sitting in this gray cubicle and you're like what the fuck is going on like I, this is not where i belong exactly <laughs> was that a dream just woken up from a dream yeah <laughs> oh it feels like a dream and why sure. can't i live in that dream shouldn't i be able to live in that dream i'm pretty sure i should live in that dream so yeah i <laughs> i can relate to that um yeah yeah i would I would love to hear about your work. You talked about having multiple personas, your online persona, your in-person persona. But they're very similar. They're basically one in the mm. same. What are what what is your work about? Mm. I generate content. I, I write. I could write anything really over been doing that for like ten years. Uh so I, I try to generate more content on my own blog about non-monogamy as well. And um how how to like raise a child in this kind of love style and just to normalize things using my own life experience, you see. And yeah, so that's, that's what I do. And a lot of other boring stuff, which is just for the money. <laughs> money is what gets you around, isn't it? It's not about trailblazing. Trailblazing doesn't pay you. Unless they pay me, then I'll trailblaze every day of my life. But no, it doesn't. So yeah. it doesn't work that way. <laughs> it doesn't work that way at all. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and so people can people can find your work on your website, and uh, I know you have an Instagram page as well. Yes, yes, that's right. Janiquil dot com is yeah. my website. Yeah. And we will links will be in the show notes. Absolutely, Yay. people will find you that way. Yeah. One more question. Go for it. Oh, we could have more. ten more questions. Oh, That's I know. Fine. Yeah. I just wanted to make sure we plugged plugged the work before we moved along. Yeah. Okay. I wanted to. I wanted to ask about bloopers. Oh yeah. So we uh, we tend to ask about if our guests if they have a fun blooper to share to show that re- to show that relationships or sex just doesn't go as planned sometimes and so if you need a minute to think about it that's totally fine but uh 
if you have anything a funny story to share, uh, we would love to hear. I have one. So it was during the Bali August trip, um, the swing party there, and my <laughs> the partner I went with um, was pissed drunk at the party and going around telling people to abuse him. And so he's around dominatrix, so they'll gladly abuse him <laughs> in a very sexual, fun way, of course. And then I was like, okay, um, have fun. I want to go and sleep. So I'm one of those that quite um, disciplined, that I'm tired. I wouldn't enjoy this. I go and rest in a room. So I, I'm like, mm-hmm. before midnight, like Cinderella, I'll just go off and sleep. And he, that then... I realized that night I woke up every hour looking, where is he? It's raining. The steps are slippery. It's not well lit at Villa. You see, am I going to wake up and, and see him floating in a pool dead because he's drunk coming back? So that was in my mind where I was alone in a room for like a few hours and I was asleep, waking up, asleep, waking up, looking for him to make sure he's safe. So finally he came back, <laughs> came back. And then he hugged me and said stuff like, oh, I miss you. And I said, oh, I'm sure you miss me. How was it? <laughs> so I'm the aftercare, clearly. So he's like, oh, it was horrible. I'm so ashamed of myself, that kind of thing. And I'm like, I just, had to, I just joked him in my arms, like, it's okay. It's okay how you're feeling. It's all right. You'll be fine tomorrow. You ask for it anyway. So <laughs> you'll be fine. You'll survive this. I'm sure you'll survive worse. This is nothing. It's okay. So it's just hilarious. Just come back and just need that, you know. And like, what happened there at the party? So in the morning, when we went to breakfast, everyone was smiling at each other. And I was like, huh, must be a good night, huh? Yeah, so we, they were sharing stories of what happened. It was just hilarious. And I told them, you guys broke him so bad, he came back broken to me. <laughs> <laughs> at breakfast, I just like, he came back a broken man. What did you guys do to him? So they told me and shared. Oh, this is what happened. <laughs> <laughs> it was hilarious. I was just, just laugh. Oh, he went back broken. Oh, well done. <laughs> yeah, that's the the lives we live, idea. right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love it. Yeah, thank you so much for sharing. <laughs> no problem. It's a great story. I even told my partners about it. I just can't help <laughs> all the salacious story. I just have to tell you, oh, this happened. He's so broken. Yeah. Yeah. Did he did he feel better about it the next day? Yeah. He was laughing, smiling at everybody that abused him. <laughs> Damn it. I'm like, yeah. It was just the after oh. the after intensity, you see. So I understand. Yeah. Oh yeah, totally. <laughs> well, it's wonderful that he had you to lean on for aftercare. Amazing. Good aftercare. And then I was like offering my services to the table at breakfast. Okay, anybody need aftercare service? I can do. Tell me what you need. $20 an hour. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yes, I charge a lot cheap, but yeah. (laughs) Yeah, $20 is way too inexpensive. $200 an hour for aftercare. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) (laughs) And I'll worry about you all night long. So you you get that as well. I love it. Yeah. I was surprised I was worried about him. I, I didn't expect that. I mean, we weren't very close to begin with when we went for the trip. Just human, right? Yeah. We'd be watching yeah. out for another person I'm traveling with. That's it. Yeah. That's human. Yeah. Human. <laughs> I love it. Is there is there anything else that we haven't talked about today that you just want to get out into the world to mm-hmm. the billions of listeners that we don't have? <laughs> <laughs> Did you say don't have? <laughs> Sorry. <Yeah. laughs> uh, we have lots of listeners, but not I'm billions. sure. <laughs> uh... I don't know, like, what do I want to say? Just, like, be brave and be your true self with people and the right people would accept you for that. And that can save a lot of heartache when you be true yourself. That's why I learned a lot of pain and heartache. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. yeah. Perfect message. Yes. Oh, great way I become to soft. <laughs> I become soft. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
Thank you so much for your time today and for like sharing everything that you did and for just amazing work that you put out there and for being yourself and trailblazing and and writing your own path and especially in an area of the world where that's even harder than some mm-hmm. other areas. So um, yeah, you're an inspiration and thank you. Thank you. I try. <laughs> try very hard every day. <laughs> yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Well, have a fantastic Friday. We're going to enjoy the rest of our Thursday. Don't tell us what's about to happen. I like to be surprised. So So do I. (laughs) Well, I don't know what's going to happen. I'm behind. I'm behind today. So enjoy, enjoy your weekend and we'll talk soon. Yeah. Thank you. And we're back. A huge thank you to Janet Quayle for the work that you do and for having an amazing conversation with us. And just for being an awesome human in the world. Uh, yeah. Kind of wish you would relocate to the U.S. We, <laughs> could, we could use more of that vibe here. A quick reminder to go check out Janet Quill's work. Links in the show notes. And just a quick reminder, we will see all of you at the Dating Your Way workshop on March 30th. And we'll see all of you at the Southwest Love Fest conference April 14th to 16th in Tucson. And we'll see all of you at our next meet and greet on April 21st. Yes. And remember, you know how to sign up for all those. They're on our website. Normalizingnonmonogamy.com. And you don't have to be a part of the community to be part of the meet and greet or to come to Southwest Love Fest or to sign up for the dating workshop. That's correct. They're all independent. We would love to see you at any and all of the above. Yes. And with that, next, next week. Next week, we got a fun one. We got a fun one. We got an interview with Roderick. And this one... Oh, you're going to want to buckle your seatbelt. Buckle it up. But also, one fun thing about this conversation, Roderick, Roderick's a filmmaker. He is. And you and I have been aspiring movie stars for quite some time. Yeah, we're working on our status. And perhaps we're going to be in a film. Yeah, perhaps. 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 That's a little teaser. Come back next week and listen. We're super excited. And so... Yeah, can't wait. I don't want to. Bra- I, what we what happened is we got invited back for the second friends reunion. They've they've been asking. They're like, we know you're the best Ross impersonator. <laughs> yeah. And so we'd really love to have you come in as a you know as a body double. Yeah, as yeah. A, as a Ross double. Yeah. Is that like your like ultimate goal dream in life? It's one of them. <laughs> anyway. Thank you all for making it through to the end here. And with that, do you have anything else? We'll see everybody in a week. Bye, everyone. Thanks for listening.